We are the... I'm, what's this for? <laughs> here on Metal Talk, I'm here at the uh, Finnish Guitar Emporium, and um, I'm here with Bob Daisley and the Lee Kirkslake. And, um... <laughs> Kirkslake? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, we are the Burrito Brothers. <laughs> That's all he normally pronounces his name and he's been down the pub. And um, the reason why we're here today is Bob Daisley's got a new autobiography called For Facts Sake. Hi Bob, how are you? Not too bad. Good, and um, tell us the, the title, for fact's sake, why have you called it that, exactly? Well, <laughs> for fuck's sake is such a common <laughs> um, term, whether it's here in England or in America or in Australia, or all, all English people, English speaking people tend to use that term as common, but because my book is factual, I just thought it would be a good play on words, for fact's sake, you know, because it's, um, there's no guesswork, I, I kept a diary since the early 70s. So, uh, you know, dates, names, places, everything is, timelines, it's all accurate. So, it's factual. And it is about your whole entire career, and it's quite a long, illustrious career you've had, like Mungo Jerry, Widowmaker. Certainly, yes. Every, every band or artist I've ever worked with, it's all, it's all in here. It's, it's, you know, it's not just music, I mean, everything is from a musical standpoint, mm -hmm. but it's my whole life, my childhood, growing up, how I got into music, that, that, that um, you know, the whole thing. And I think the main, main selling point of this book, and I think what a lot of fans would like to get into, obviously, you and Lee, you sort of been the first line of Blizzard of Oz, which is like <coughs> kick-started Ozzy Osbourne's solo career. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And obviously there's a lot of band contention, there's been a lot of history, great songs, and a lot of dirtiness has gone on. For, well, was this like, did you tell Walt Snow? It wasn't book? actually a solo career, and that's, that's, mm. I mean, that's what they tell you now, but they try to rewrite history in, in many ways, but it was yeah. a band called the Blizzard, Blizzard of Oz. Of Oz. Oh, yeah. In fact, it's was quoted by so many guys in one particular instance we were supposed to do a festival and they left off the beer called it the Lizard of Oz. Yeah, that's in the book as well, there's a picture of the poster there. They build us as the Lizard of Oz. <laughs> but to be fair, did you, do you think the album would have gone on to sell six million copies if it was as clear as was Lizard of Oz? You couldn't have stopped it. You couldn't have stopped that album going. It was I too didn't clever. I did sorry. No, do, do you think that the the career of Blizzard of Oz would have been so successful if it didn't change the name to Ozzy Osbourne, because obviously oh, Ozzy's a brand. Of course. You could have called it shit, but yeah. it wouldn't yeah. have mattered. It wouldn't have mattered. The, album, the, the songs written were genius. I mean, I'm not, I, before I even re had written one, I played on the first album and did my part and enjoyed playing it and saw the talent in Barbara and Randy and, and their playing, and I went, I'm glad I'm part of this. And which I was, and, and, and uh, only to say that Diamond Man was even bigger. So, well, Lee was the missing link of, or the final piece of the puzzle. Randy and Ozzy and I auditioned many drummers. It just got really tedious. It's like, God, Lee was the last bloke we had to audition. We, we knew that if he hadn't worked out, that we, the, the record company, Jack Records, was saying, well, you might have to go into the studio because we want a product. You might have to go in with a, a session player. Um, but well, as soon as Lee started playing, Randy and I looked at each other and thought, where the fuck's he been? We could, we could see the, the, the eye contact. Was like, Here he is, this is the guy we want. And was the chemistry between the four of you, was it instant? Well, I, I, yeah, I, was. I, I, I spoke, yeah, it was fabulous for us. And I, I never forget Ozzy going, who would have been known? <laughs> and Randy said, yeah, we got a fucking drummer. And Bob was going, hmm. Because we worked, we've known each other prior to that for a bit, and uh, we spoke before. Uh, well, I, when I was in Widowmaker, we were on the bill with Uriah Heep. So we did time, a, so we, we knew each other, so yeah. we had a kind of rapport then, which, which turned into a, a long-time relationship. But, um, you know, no, again, your question, there was no way anybody could have stopped that. Um, all it the, it doesn't matter how you build it or what you called it, that people love those albums. That's, you know, it's just, uh, there was a magic in them, so, in, yeah, in the both there, of it them. Was. There was enjoyment in it, and that enjoyment comes out of the music. You know, it's, that's how it was. It was meant to happen. And with the Aussie Cat, Aussie has been a pretty well publicised. You know, like they re recorded the parts in 2004, I took your parts off and replaced it with uh, <laughs> Bob Trujillo and what, Mike Sharon? Bowling. Oh, yeah. Sharon Osborne, yeah. But, um, is, is that all clear in the air now? Are you, are you back friendly with clear. Like, um, it's a closure now, no, you've written no, it in the book? Uh -uh, no. no, never will be. We, no, 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 no reason. No, no, they, they put us back on the records to resell them. <laughs> didn't mention us even. It didn't didn't consult us, didn't ask us, but it was just done. You're taken off, now you're back on. Still didn't get paid. Mm. So, you know, the box set with the, 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 and, and, the, and the coffee table book, and not, not a mention of us, not a picture, but, you know, they're not trying That's to... That's why, because that's a issue in the box set, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. 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 So, uh, it's the arrogance of a woman that thinks she's a, go a goddess, really, and she's going to come 
She can't go down with a big fall. And, and with the book, <laughs> with the book, obviously you've got to be careful what you say in many ways. So do you, do you, have, do you get lawyers go for the book, like with a toothbrush, like a tooth well, comb, and you'll, be you'll, careful you'll what get, you say? Get the, no, you'll get the truth of what happened, how it happened, who was involved. I haven't dug any dirt on anyone. I haven't done any name calling. I didn't need to. The naked truth mm. is enough to make it interesting. And, and I've just told what happened and how it happened. And, and I think a lot of that, like you mentioned earlier, actually, you're quite meticulous because you kept a diary of everything well, for your recording yeah, career. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. what happened that day is there yep. in black and white. Yeah. That's, that's what proved our, our situations in court, if you like, with against mm -hmm. Don, arrest him. But um, it was Bob's diary it was so accurate that there was no argument. And just moving on from that, because obviously it's all in a book and we don't want to spill the beans now. Yeah, right, We've got to get yeah, the book yeah. and read it. But you started like Living Loud in 2004. We, we actually did some of the Aussie songs yourself, but actually some of the own material was actually very good. Like there was a great single, In the Name of God. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Jimmy Baines, I, Jimmy Barnes singing. Love, Fantastic yeah. song. And um, obviously, unfortunately, it wasn't a big hit around Europe, but was it a big hit in Australia, that song? Well, it could have been. <clears throat> because Jimmy Barnes is a, is a, a, a solo artist, I think there was a certain amount, and, and Steve Morrison mm. and Don Area in Deep Purple, I think there was a little bit of sort of suppressing the product going on because, you know, um, it, it, it wasn't really meant to take off and be that big. But we loved doing it, we had a great time. Um, and just as a, as a point of interest, we did, we did those songs from the Blizzard of Oz and Diary of a Madman albums as, as kind of our own. A tribute to, to Randy and, and Lee and I had, uh, had talked about doing that for years, mm. I mean 10, 12 years you know, so it was nothing to do with retaliation mm. for us being taken off those albums, it had nothing to do with that. And know. how was the feeling like playing those songs again, it must have like, redropped a lot of memories? Well, it, great. It, it, it did, but, but we, um, we, did, we wanted to do slightly different versions of them, we didn't want to try to recreate what had already been done. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, the, the, the arrangements are different, they've got little different parts in them and oh, all that. You know. oh, come on, you're playing with some great players, Bob, Don Airy, Steve Morse, Jimmy Barnes singing, myself drums, thankfully enough. That's a great concept of uh, musicians. You only got a chance to do like, a few dates in Australia, never got, was there any offers to do European dates? Because obviously I know got deeper. No, it was busy. because of the availability of everybody. Yeah. The only reason we got to do the, the couple of shows in Australia was that um, <coughs> Deep Purple had been there, or they were there, playing, so we had Steve Morse there, we had Don Airy there, I live in Sydney, Jimmy Barnes is in Sydney. I so just had to fly over from England. So all we had to do was get Lee over there, and, and we did a few quick rehearsals and two shows. That was know. it. Originally with the Living Loud thing, there was it was it was going to be sort of guest, it was going to be Lee and myself as a rhythm section, and get a few different people in, maybe some guest singers, some guest yeah. guitarists. Mm. I'd already spoken to Gary Moore and he said, yeah, I'll do a couple of tracks. Our manager, Drew Thompson, and had already spoken to Brian May, he said he'd do a couple of tracks. And we were going to look at maybe um, Ronnie Dio to sing on a couple. And, and what's his name um, from Rainbow? And John Law John, was going to play yeah. some keyboards, Don Airy some keyboards. But so any, any possibility of like resurrecting Living Loud? Like, so you can get other we members in? We can't get the player, we can't get the time together. It's because just, it's just so didn't committed. get the window of opportunity yeah. with, with Steve Morse and Don Airy on the road, a lot of purple work. Well, I say, get another guitarist in, is that a possibility? No, nah, it wouldn't be Living Loud, then. Yeah, yeah well, you, you just want to start again, another name, <laughs> another band. You know, it was it worked what we did, and, it was, and, and admittedly, as Bob knows, we, we, we had fun. But so did the other members, Steve Morse and Don Airy, when we did the live show. They loved it. Didn't oh they? yeah, they did just, yeah, yeah. actually talked about it for hours. Well, like, it. it is a great album, and anybody's not heard it, oh, buy it. You'd be very pleasantly surprised. And uh, let's go back to you, Bob. Briefly, like in the eighties, you went and you leaked as well, but. but you was with Aussie for two albums, and you both like joined been back to Euro Heap for two albums, and like you had Gary Moore. He was like prolific through the eighties. You know, did you ever see Home? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, there is there is that element of it. It's, it's like, um, you know, who am I? Where do I live? Yeah, you play on a different album every year. I, 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 I never saw my place. I, I did maybe one week in a year for like three years on the chart. But we were so big in America. Lee tends to exaggerate when we were No, that's true in America. We were doing. I told you five million times. 11, 11 months tours because we go from America straight out to England, change suitcase, go to Italy, and then go in the studio overnight through the night, and then go in Lansdowne, and then go back out to Germany, and then come back to England, see the wife or whoever was girlfriend, 
and then within three days back out to America. I mean, I, that is what it's all about. It was our management wanted us to work our balls off to earn plenty of money because he was on 50%, mm. you know. And uh, Bob, like, obviously, you now live in Australia. I and mean, why did you sort of give up the life, the rock and roll life here, and then decide to sort of settle in Australia? Exactly. Um, I was working a lot in America, and um, my wife wanted to go back to Australia, and I thought, well, it doesn't really matter that much where I'm based, but but now it does. I miss England, and um, you know, I'd, if if I had my choice, I'd rather be here. Oh, yeah. you know, Australia's great; it's a nice place and all that, but it's not like. I suppose it. you missed the Conway chip. Of Fellow musicians, of yeah, over the years. yeah. There's a lot of things I miss about here. Mm. And um, completely changing the subject here. A little bird tells me like you're, you're a big sort of a uh, vinyl collector and memorabilia, and you're a big Beatles fan. A Beatles fan, definitely. I've got quite a big vinyl collection, but it's not so much modern vinyl now. It's stuff, original stuff from like 60s, 70s, 80s, and that, you know, before CDs. So. But I, I think if, um, and I am definitely a Beatles fan, without mm -hmm. a doubt, Be best thing that ever happened to popular music, I think. They were really clever. And uh, what's your favourite album? What's your favourite era of the Beatles? Um, I don't know, that's difficult, you know. It's, it's like... Because um, I was just so I, good at I what they did. I would say my favourite Beatles album was probably the Magical Mystery Tour. Oh, really? Yeah. Right, yeah. yeah. And I'm not saying that just because it was John Lennon's favourite Beatles album, but that it, it's got so many great songs on it mm. of, of the era that I like, you know. And have you got, I believe you've got some sort of personal handwritten lyrics from John Lennon, is that right? I've got a handwritten letter oh, from right. John Lennon. He did the little drawings in it of him yeah. and Yoko. And was that to you personally, was it? Or? No, no, no. I just, I was really into collecting John Lennon and Beatles stuff mm. when I was at a, an auction. And, uh, and I, that was in the 80s, you know. I bought mm. it just because I was fascinated with it. Yeah. I was, You've still got your jukeboxes. Hmm? Still got the jukeboxes. Yeah. Fantastic. What music have you got in your jukebox? Yeah, yeah. What music have yeah, I got? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, original well, stuff. I've got a, a, a Wurlitzer 1015, which has 78s on it. And they're all old rock and roll 78s, like oh, Gene right. Vince and yeah. Eddie Cochran and the Ebley Brothers. And oh, that's, that's brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's brilliant. And I've got a 50s um, 45 player. Yeah. And, that, and that's got a lot of. Um, well, cl you know, classic Motown. Well, me and Lee would be around for a Barbie song. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Happy days. Yeah. 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 It's got Happy a lot of original yeah. um, old 45s on it, you know, of, of the 60s and old blue stuff, old um, Motown stuff, yeah. you know, all that stuff. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. And uh, Lee, obviously, you know, you left you a few years back, and uh, I think a lot of fans always like to know how you're doing, and um, how are you doing? I'm fine. I'm doing really well. I mean, I'm still playing on and off. I don't have done four gigs this year and I did about eight gigs last year but I, I concentrated on the last year and a half writing with a friend of mine called Stefan Bergren who used to be a company of snakes and such like and um, we got together during a band called um, um, Masters Project and he was the singer and we befriended each other got on well and so we decided to work together write an album and we have we've just finished it yeah, you look forward to that. Yeah, it should have. Well, it's the same thing else. I'm a bit fastidious in my mixing. I, can, I go in there and go, no, and I go away, walk away, listen to someone else, and then go back to it, and go, you know, no, yay or nay or whatever. But I, I, I like to be picky. I'm probably a bit too picky as far as Stefan's concerned. And I just want to wrap this interview up. Um, you two, you know, you, you say you have worked together with Ozzy and Heap and living there. What has been like your happiest moment? Many for me in, in, in with Randy. Happiest moment. That's yeah, yeah. Well, you know, with Randy, content Randy time. was a lot of fun, and being with me and Bob and Randy on occasion, we had some real good laughs. Well, it was a happy time, um, especially during the first album, during Blizzard Wars, you know, because it was, you know, the creative process was very satisfying. We were, it was kind of like, oh, we're onto something here. It's really good. But because don't forget the the. the um, the musical climate in those days, we're talking late 79, early 1980s, it, it, it was all sort of punk and disco dance music and, and the new wave thing was coming mm -hmm. in and all that. So to play hard rock or heavy rock or whatever you know, term you want to put on it, is, um, we were kind of almost taking a bit of a gamble because some people considered players of that ilk and, and, and that sort of music has been a bit dinosaur. You know, mm -hmm. so. But we, you know, we just did what we loved, and and 
we didn't go in and, and think, oh, let's have a hit album, or what can we do to have a hit single, or whatever. We, you know, we just played what we wanted to play, and it turned out well. So. And, and we had our freedom, didn't we? Mm -hmm. Our freedom was important. We had no one leaning over our shoulder going, I don't like that, or I don't think you should record it like that, or we couldn't have the drums. We, well, we that's why we, just, we wanted a good um, engineer, engineer, which yeah. was Max Norman. He, at, at, fabulous. At, um, at Ridge Farm, and we produced it. This is what we want, this is, we wanted to be hands on, it's our baby, and that's what happened. You know, just quickly to you, Lee, um, I'm sad we lost Trevor Boulder this year from UA Heat. Yeah. Um, what's your happiest memory of him? Oh, I've just done an interview about many, many, many good memories. His sense of humour was very dry. He was up in there with the tops, with like Bob and Dan, Gary. He was a great bass player. And he was a reader, what I call a reader, which, if you understand music, it's when you've got the bass player and the drummer together, you probably have never done this track before, you look at each other and you know exactly what the, the other guy is going to play. Mm -hmm. You read each other like a book, bang. That's a magic. That's so rare. In today's form, it doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. Not to my knowledge, I haven't seen it. But then, you get them, and they're rare. And that's what he was. He was like Bob and Gary. He was very, very good. Did right. you ever meet Trevor yourself? Oh yeah, oh, many yeah. times. Yeah, nice bloke. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I took his place and he took my place. That's right, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, Bob Lee, it's been fantastic talking to you both. Wish you all the best for the future and uh, the book. Thank you. For fact's sake, the book, there it is, books. buy the book. It's, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. it's a fantastic read and it's full of new facts that we don't know about. It's all there, so yeah, all the best for the future. Thank you yeah, very much. Thanks. Cheers.